Hello, hello, my name is Shauna and welcome to our 45 minute strength workout. Today we're going to be using the TRX suspension trainer and your TRX kettlebell or kettlebells if you have several. I'm really excited about this workout because we are going to build from a part to whole approach a really popular awesome exercise called the Turkish get up. That one's done with kettlebells. That can be considered one of the most functional and beneficial exercises there are, but there's a lot of pieces to it. So after a warm up, we're going to do several different exercises, about seven different exercises, four sets, 30 seconds of work, followed by 30 seconds of rest. We'll use the suspension trainer to develop a skill and then practice that part of the Turkish getup. We're going to end your workout today by doing three perfect Turkish get-ups on each side of your body. You're definitely going to feel this one. All right, so let's get moving with our warm-up. We're going to start with your TRX standing rollout, straps at mid-length, stand facing away from the anchor. Give me that nice strong plank, squeeze your buns, roll those arms out just a touch, and then bring the hands right beneath your shoulders. Again, keeping those buns tight, roll out just a touch, hands directly beneath your shoulders. Belly buttons in core is braced, everything is nice and strong and planked. Are you squeezing those butt cheeks? Do you have that straight line from your ears to your shoulders to your hips to your ankles? Five, four, three, two, and one. Good. T-Rex squat row combo. Strap stay at mid-length, stand facing the anchor. Lean back, walk it under a bit. Eyes are up at that anchor point. Bend your knees, get a nice deep squat. Feel that stretch in your knees and your hips. Plank, big row and squeeze, and back to your plank. We're stretching out your hips and your knees as you squat down. We're engaging behind your shoulder blades as you come up, perfecting that posture. Your shoulders have a lot of work to do today holding that kettlebell overhead. So it's a squat and a plank and a row and a plank. 10 more seconds here. Spend your time at one part or the other if you'd like. But let's start moving those joints that we're going to be using today. Three, two, and one. Forward lunge with Y fly. Strap stay at mid length, stand facing away. Find your frank and plank position. Arms straight out in front of you. Eyes are up, shoulders are down. Take a big step forward with your right foot. Bend the left knee toward the floor. Press into the handles, brace your core, come up. Step forward with your left foot. Make sure the right knee lowers down, feeling a great hip flexor stretch. Press down and switch. Alternating sides. Are you letting your shoulders fall away from your ears? Is that front knee tracking directly over the middle of your toes? Are you really pressing down on those handles as you stand up, like you're slamming the hood of a car after an oil change? Five, four, three, two, and one. We're gonna move into your TRX golfer's rotation. So strap stay at mid-length, stand facing the anchor, press down on those handles. We'll add a little shoulder sweep to that too, I'll show you. Go ahead and rotate all the way up, stick the landing, tension on the straps, drop the arms down, and up, and swing it through the other side. Get a nice stretch, touch the ceiling. Lots of tension on your straps. Now, if this is a little too much on your shoulders, just walk back a touch towards your anchor. If you don't feel this stretch, walk away. Keeping your body nice and straight. Notice how my feet stay planted. I'm just pivoting on the feet, facing all the way toward the other side of the room. Oh, let's do one more. Oh, stretch and drop. I'm going to do a little twist to my regular warm-up. We're going to do something called TRX wall slides. We've got a lot of overhead shoulder work today, so I want to get your shoulders prepared for that. Backs of your hands go in the foot cradle, stand facing the anchor point, feet a little wider than shoulder width apart. I'm going to pull back on those straps, keeping tension. Drive my hands straight up, letting my shoulders fall away from my ears and lower them back down. Nothing else in my body is moving. It's my arms and my shoulders. You should feel the backs of your shoulders lighting up. Your job is to keep your neck nice and relaxed. Keep pulling back, keep those ribs hidden. If this is too hard to reach your arms overhead, you can take a little step back if you have a little less mobility in your shoulders. Otherwise, walk it forward so those thumbs come right down to your earlobes, pulling backwards on those straps, not leaning. You're creating that tension. Three, two, and one. Finally, 
my kettlebell around the world. Grab your T-Rex kettlebell, and I want you to swing it around your body. Grab and grab, don't let go. What we're doing here is we're warming up your shoulders, getting used to holding the load of the kettlebell, and bracing your core as the weight of the kettlebell wraps around your body. Now, if you have anything fragile near you, wherever you're doing this workout right now, you might want to move away from it because sometimes you drop the bell during this exercise. And let's unwind it, other way. Now, this way is gonna feel strange, so make sure you do have a good grip on the bell and enjoy that swing. Rock your hips, really bring those arms around. But again, make sure you have a solid grip before you let go with the other hand. Let's see if I can get through this whole warm-up without dropping my kettlebell. All right, 10 seconds left of this, and then we'll jump into that workout and get really good at your Turkish get-ups. Five, four, three, two, and one. We're gonna start with your TRX planks because planking kind of interweaves itself through everything. I'm gonna grab a mat. We're gonna have your straps at mid-calf length. Remember, we have four sets of all this stuff, and I'll change it up a little bit for every set. Let's bring those straps down to mid-calf length. Have a seat facing the anchor point. Two fingers in each foot cradle. Hold it wide in a Christmas tree. Roll back, pop those toes in, ground facing away. Let's do plank with hip abduction first. Push down, drive it up. This is happening, 30 seconds. Press the feet apart and together. I'm actively driving down into the foot cradles. My shoulders are directly over my elbows. I'm bracing the core, belly button in. Open and drive. Whew. Squeezing the buns, my ears, my shoulders, my hips, and my ankles are as straight as a surfboard. Two and one. Gently come down. We've got 30 seconds recovery. This 30 seconds is really important because it allows us to work at that near maximal capacity when we come back into it. You can keep doing that same thing. I'm gonna move up to my hand plank with hip abduction. Dun, dun, dun. A little bit more challenging because you're a little less stable when you're on your hands versus on your forearms. So we're going again in five, four, three, two, and one. Pressing down, open, and close. Are your shoulders directly above your hands? <sighs> Number one rule with TRX suspension training is never let your hips sag. If you feel those hips sagging, set your knees down, reset, and come back into position. We have 10 seconds left. <sighs> really pressing downward into the foot cradles to create that full core brace, two and one. Gently set your knees down. All right, next one. We're gonna still play with these planks. We're gonna do a T-Rex body saw. So in this body saw, we're gonna start with your forearms. Um, on the ground, your elbows are directly beneath your shoulders. You'll push the floor away about two or three inches and return. So you're not coming in front, you're just pushing back and return. Slow and deliberate and painful. If you feel these in your back, just do your regular T-Rex plank again. Two and one, strong plank. I'm pushing back and then I brace back in neutral. It's not a big movement. Back, brace back in neutral. If you wanna make that harder, you can move back so you're, I'm sorry, easier, you can move back so that you're underneath the anchor a little bit. If you wanna make that harder, you can crawl forward. Everything's tight, body straight. Five, four, three, two, and one, good. I'm gonna show you your fourth option, <laughs> but I'm just gonna do a set of body saws with this. Your fourth option is called a plank press. These are really, really tough, and you wanna make sure you're not letting your hips sag, but you find your plank position, you do a body saw, and then push up into both hands. See how mine was a little wobbly? So I haven't quite earned the right, but maybe you are strong enough. Otherwise, TRX body saw again, two and one. Strong plank. I'm gonna do my body saw. You can come all the way up into those hands if you'd like. Remember, if those hips start sagging, just sit down, reset, brace, come back up. If 15 seconds left in this. Five, four, three, two, 
and one. Oh, that was no fun. Double butt kick to get out of there. Next up, we're moving on. You got a minute recovery here. So grab a sip of water, stretch it out, roll out those shoulders. Next up, we've got your TRX sit-ups. I love this exercise. But they're a lot harder than they look. We still have 40 seconds, so you can hang out and catch your breath for a little bit. Give your core a break because we're doing another abdominal exercise. When I do this one, my heels are in the foot cradles and my arms are straight up toward the ceiling. You don't get to start back here, it's here. Now the trick is to actively press your heels downward and you're going to roll all the way up to this seated position. If you're tight in your hip flexors, you might notice your heels jump a little bit. That's because your hip flexors are trying to do the work and you want to squeeze your buns. So get those heels in. Let's give it a shot. TRX sit-ups, arms straight up, mid-calf length, three, two, and one. Roll it up. Touch the ceiling. Slowly roll that down. Keep actively pressing downward. Roll it up. This is going to come into play very soon with your Turkish get-up. Slowly roll that back down. Take your time. Ah. See how you see that little bounce in the straps when I go? That means my hip flexors are trying to do a little bit of the work. In other words, I'm cheating a bit. <sighs> Keep pressing downward into those foot cradles. Two and one. Good. Shake it out. Take a little break. We're going to do the same thing again. Relax those legs. And it's amazing, this exercise, even for some really fit people, can be nearly impossible to do. If you're not able to come all the way up, then just curl up as far as you can and come back down. We're going again in about 10 seconds. So let those legs hang dangle. Let your abdominals relax. Now let's get back into that position. Arms straight up toward the ceiling or the sky if you're outside, two and one. Push down, roll it up, touch the ceiling, and then back down nice and controlled. Again, actively driving those heels downward into the foot cradles. What's really funny is my right hip flexor is much tighter than my left. And when I do this, you might be able to see it now, my right leg tends to jump up even higher than my left leg does. I still have some work to do on this one. We're always getting better every day. Three, two, and one. That was the second set. If you want to add a little rotation to this one, you can. So this time when you sit up, just rotate to one side, up, and return back down. Try not to let your legs go weebly wobbly crazy. You still have 15 seconds. Enjoy this rest break. These rest breaks are really going to come in handy shortly when you start to get a bit fatigued. All right. Keep driving downward at the heels. Reach up toward the ceiling. Going in three, two, and one. Push down, roll it up. And then I'm going to add my rotation. Hey, and back up and down controlled. Still actively pressing down. I come up, I rotate, return, back down. This rotation is just adding a little something extra to it. Rotate and nice and controlled back down. Just wait till we load this exercise with the kettlebell shortly. That's no joke. Three, two, and one. We have one more set of these TRX sit-ups. I hope you're doing well with them. For some people, it's not that big of a deal. Others, these are excruciatingly challenging. So hopefully this is kind of somewhere in the middle for you. Again, make sure those heels are pressing downward. Your toes are back towards your shins. You're thinking about that nice, strong, tight abdominal contraction. We're going again in 10 seconds, driving your heels down, reaching your hands up. I'm going to add the rotation again too. Three, two, and one. Push down, roll it up. Open up to the side. And back down, controlled. Keep actively pressing those heels down. <laughs> These do get a little bit more challenging on that four set. <laughs> but I love this exercise. It's like a Pilates roll up if you've done some Pilates before. Although here, you could really take advantage of using the TRX suspension trainer. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, it's kettlebell time, my friends. We've got a minute to get ready for this. This next movement is really similar to what we were just doing. It's the very first part of your Turkish getup. I'm going to have you grab your kettlebell, and I would start with a lighter one for now, just to get used to this. Um, you're going to take that kettlebell in your hand. I'm going to start with it in my right hand and put it in the racked position. My fingers go through the kettlebell. My thumb goes by my chin. 
I'm going to lay down, bend my right knee in my right hand, and have that right arm straight up. It's very important you keep that arm straight and you keep your eyes on the bottom of the kettlebell the entire time. My left arm is grounded. I'm going to roll to my shoulder, elbow, hand, and then slowly lower back down. So I'm actually rolling to the shoulder and then elbow and pressing up on this other side. We're gonna go right, left, right, left. You guys ready? Go in in five. Grab your bell, right knee bent. Four, three, two, and one. Left hand down, going left shoulder, elbow, hand. Eyes on the kettlebell. Slowly lower it down. So we're just practicing that curl up portion. Shoulder, elbow, hand. Actively press your kettlebell up toward the ceiling. Three steps. Big press. If this is too much or too challenging, just ditch the kettlebell and get used to the movement. And slowly lower it down. 30 seconds off, grab your bell, curl it over to the side. Now when you bring your kettlebell to the other side of your body, you're actually gonna bring it around the back side of your head, just so you don't bump your face when you bring the bell around. It's gonna be the same thing on this side. We're going in 20 seconds. You'll rack it in the left side, straighten it up. My left knee will be bent. My right arm will be down firmly on the floor. I'm gonna roll to my right shoulder, elbow, hand, and then lower it down, controlled. Going in five, four, three, two, and one. Roll shoulder, elbow, hand, and back down, controlled. It's hard to run the side for me. I'm still actively pressing my kettlebell up toward the ceiling the entire time. Don't let that left arm bend. You're blocking it between your hand and the floor. Two and one. Slowly lower it down, bring it around the back side of your head, other side. Let's do that again. If you have a bigger kettlebell and you feel comfortable upgrading, go for it. <laughs> if you're still trying to get used to this movement, you can stick with where, where you are. Or if you're still feeling a little unsafe, just use your body weight and move through that same crunch position. This is kind of comfortable, but unfortunately we have to go again in 10 seconds. So I'm gonna grab my kettlebell in the right hand, my right knee's bent, press it up to the ceiling, left hand down. Let's do this, two and one. Shoulder, elbow, hand, drive it up and down controlled. Nice, strong plank, squeezing everything. Ah, lowering down controlled. Ah. Two and one. Good. Slowly lower that down. Let's bring it around to the other side. I love how I say good to you, and I can't actually see you but I'm just assuming you're doing a really good job, so nice job. <laughs> All right, let's switch sides. Bend your left knee, right leg straight. We're gonna grab this kettlebell in the left hand. Let's start in the racked position, then we'll drive it straight up toward the ceiling. This is our last set of this series. And press that up. Right hand down, here we go. And shoulder, elbow, hand. Stick that landing, down controlled. Actively press that kettlebell toward the ceiling. Shoulder, elbow, hand. Lower down, control. That wasn't so controlled. <laughs> Are you keeping your eyes on the bottom of your kettlebell? Three, two, and one. Good, you survived that one. Roll that off to the side. Now we're gonna do your TRX hip presses. So we're keeping those straps at mid-calf length and we're gonna get your heels back in the foot cradles. You've got about 45 seconds before we start, so feel free to grab a sip of water. And yes, it gets harder from this point on. <laughs> so the T-Rex hip press position, once again, I'm getting my heels in just like we did before with those sit-ups. Two fingers in each foot cradle, hold it wide in an A-frame, tuck your knees into your chest, land those heels on your fingers, Extend your legs. Now make sure your toes are back towards your shins. Scoot your bum in a touch and bend your knees to 90-ish degrees. If you're on a door anchor, you want your feet hovering just in front of that door. If you're not, pretend there is a door right beneath your anchor and you never want to touch it. You don't want those legs to extend. You're going to squeeze your buns, lift your hips up, 
and then tap back down. Trying to get the hips in line with your knees and shoulders. Let's go, 30 seconds. Push down and tap. Remember, we got four sets of this awesomeness. <laughs> Squeeze your buns. Drive your heels down to get those hips up. Head and shoulders are on the ground. Butt cheeks tight to take some of the work away from the hamstrings. Are your toes staying back towards your shins? Is your head and shoulders staying on the ground? Three, two, and one. Ha, ah, relax those legs for a moment. Nice work. <laughs> Aren't those fun? This is an essential part of your Turkish getup, as you'll see soon. And this is the part that most people mess up. So this will be fun to practice when we bring this hip press over to your Turkish getup. Unless you're too tired after doing four sets of these, then they'll be even harder on your Turkish getup. All right, guys, get ready to go again. Bend the knees to 90, buns tight. Three, two, and one. Push down, lift the hips up, and tap. Push down, and tap. Are you getting the hips high enough so again, there's that straight line from the knees to the bum to your shoulders. When you stand up, we should be able to see a sweat print of your head and your shoulders and your arms. In other words, you're not lifting your head up off the ground. Five, four, three, two, and one, enjoy that 30 seconds rest. Remember when maybe before 30 seconds felt like it was too long? Now it probably feels pretty good or not even long enough. <laughs> We're gonna do this again. I'm gonna give you the option if you wanna make this even more challenging. When you go to lift your arms up off the ground, that's gonna make it a little less stable, a little more challenging. We're going in 10. Ah, <sighs> don't fall asleep here. Bend the knees to 90, toes back towards your shins, hands up if you can. Here we go, push down, lift, and tap. Actively driving down into the heels, squeezing the butt cheeks to come up into that hip drive position. My hips are hinged, my hips are unhinged. And again, we'll see that soon on your Turkish getup. Push down, drive up. Are those toes back towards your shins? Are you squeezing your buns as you lift up, lift up off the ground? Two and one, shake it out. If I did my math right, we have one more set of these. It's very possible I'm wrong, but I'm looking at my timer and my timer says we have one more set of these. I kind of wish I was wrong. We have 20 seconds to go, guys. I'm gonna do one more set with those arms up off the ground. If that's really killing you, you can drop them down. All right, All right guys, last time, knees at 90. Do not let those legs extend. Arms up if you can, head and shoulders down. Two and one, push down, lift and tap. Squeeze your buns first driving the hips up. Four set feels great, doesn't it? <laughs> oh my. <sighs> Who wrote this workout? This is ridiculous. <laughs> I wrote this workout, in case you're wondering. 10 seconds to go. Ugh. Push and lift. Five, Ugh. four, three, two, and one. Oh my goodness. All right. The hardest part of your Turkish getup is incorporating that hip press, that glute drive, and then bringing your knee through. So we've got 45 seconds. You can grab some water if you want. I'm just gonna show you what we're about to do here. And I'll show you without the weight first. So starting with my kettlebell in my right hand, you've already done this part, so this is where we're gonna start. Now the hardest part here is I have my right foot planted. I'm gonna do that same hip press that we just did in the straps, bam. And now I'm gonna bring my left leg through, keep those hips up, and stop in that half kneeling position. I'll put this hand down, kick it through, hip is pressed, and come back down. But the important part is you actually try to press your hip up. All right, you guys ready? We're going in about 10 seconds. Let's grab your kettlebell in that racked position. Press it up, shoulder elbow hand, starting here. Plant that right foot, eyes on the bottom of your kettlebell. Here we go, huge glute bridge. Tuck this leg through, eyes on the bell, lunge. Back here, keep pressing through your right foot, set your bum down, eyes on the bottom of the bell. Unhinge, tuck the knee, half kneeling. Hand down, press through, bum down, arm stays up. Glute bridge, tuck the knee, 
set, eyes on the bell, two and one. Slowly lower that down, bring the bell around to the back side of your head. Good, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now you notice if you didn't do that correctly, it was really hard to get your leg underneath, wasn't it? So you need to make sure you really emphasize this huge glute bridge in that position so you have room to tuck your right leg through. Let's get into that position on the left side. So I'm taking my bell in my left hand, drive it up, do that first part, shoulder, elbow, hand. Here we go. Eyes on the bottom of my bell, huge glute bridge. Tuck the right knee under, half kneeling. Then I reverse it. Hand down, press with the foot, boom, and down. Squeeze my bum, glute bridge. Tuck the right knee under, half kneeling. Are you looking at the bottom of your bell? Hand down, slide it back, bum down. Unhinge, pressing those hips up. Knee under, half kneeling. Are you still actively pressing the hand up? And come on out of there. Good job, slowly lower it down. Bring the bell around to the other side of your body. Are you getting it? <laughs> it's tricky, isn't it? And it's hard holding that kettlebell up and keeping your eyes on the bottom because you're trying to look at your legs and figuring out what's happening with the rest of your body. So really keep your eyes on the bottom of the bell. That helps keep your arm in that straight line over your shoulder. Because believe it or not, this Turkish get up is a lot of shoulder work. All right, guys, ready? I'm gonna roll it up, shoulder, elbow, hand. Lock that bell, and here we go. Hip press, tuck the knee. Half kneeling, how's your plank? Hand down, press to your foot, drop to your bum. Hip press, tuck the knee, stick it. And again, you're going at your own pace. Are you still looking at the bottom of your kettlebell? Press it up, less than 10 seconds to go. Actively drive. Nice job, and come on down, good. And bring it around to the other side. Awesome, we have one more side to go. So I really love the Backstreet Boys, and my kettlebell coach used to threaten to put a picture of the Backstreet Boys on the bottom of my kettlebell so that I would keep looking at the bottom of that bell. And you know what? It worked. Left knee is bent. Grab that kettlebell, roll it up, shoulder, elbow, hand here. Ugh. Look at that picture on the bottom of your bell. Huge hip press up, tuck the leg. Half kneeling, hand down, press through your foot, set the bum down, glute bridge, tuck the knee, are you still looking at your bell? And back down, actively pressing that kettlebell up. Glute bridge, tuck, and stick that landing, finding the plank. Two and one, awesome, come on out of there. Slowly lower your bell down. All right, let's get crazy now. We've got your TRX lunge next. So we're really gonna work on those lunge mechanics. The end is in sight, I promise. One of my all-time favorite exercises, because there's so much you can do with this. I'm gonna get you set up, feel free to join me, especially if this exercise is new for you. I'm gonna grab both handles, the rubber parts, my straps are at mid-calf length. I'm gonna grab both handles with my right hand. Standing facing away from the anchor, I'm gonna bend my left knee, point that left toe, look at the poo on the bottom of my left shoe. Drive it through both foot cradles. Hey, I'm there. Meet me on the ground. Your front heel is one foot in front of your back knee. Chest is up tall and proud. You're gonna find a big, strong glute and core brace to stand up. We're going in five, four, Three, two, and one. Drive it up. You're gonna bring the back knee, one foot behind your front heel, two inches off the ground. So I'm not shooting my back leg back. Again, imagine there's that door but right behind you. You don't wanna kick the door. Now, is my front knee tracking directly above my middle toes? Is my front foot flat and anchored to the ground? How is my posture? Are my shoulders down and back? Am I driving this knee up on top? Done, single leg butt kick to get out of there. Let's get set up on the other side. Kinda cool, huh? And grab both handles with my left hand. I'm gonna bend my right knee, point that right toe, pop it through those foot cradles, coming back down to the ground. Make sure you're slightly in front of the anchor point. That's gonna help you use your back leg. 
Okay, my back knee is one foot behind my front heel, and this is where it comes back to every single time, except for not quite touching the ground. We're going in three, two, and one. Buns tight, drive it up. Do you feel difference between sides? <laughs> I sure do. My chest is up, bending those knees 90-90. Tummy tight, shoulders down and back. Now let's do those body checks again. Is that knee tracking directly over your middle toes? Don't let it buckle in. Are you using that back leg for balance? Are you lowering the back knee one foot behind your front heel? Three, two, and one. Single leg butt kick to get out of there. All right, you can do the same thing again if you're still getting used to those TRX lunges. Otherwise, you can add a little bit of load. I'm gonna grab my kettlebell here. When I get into the position, I'm gonna hold it in a goblet position. So I'm gonna get my left toe in, grab both handles with my right hand. Bend the left knee, pop that left toe in. Lowering back down to my starting position, get in my kettlebell in that goblet position. Three, two, one. Push down, lift. Now make sure you feel safe because when you go in this goblet position, you've lost to being able to use your hands to catch yourself. I'm straight down, squeeze, straight back up. My shoulders are down and back out of my ears and drive it. A nice, strong, active plank. And come on down, nice job. Single leg butt kick to get out of there. Let's do the other side. Getting ready to put this together for the Turkish get up. I'm gonna grab both handles in my left hand, bend my right knee, look at the bottom of my right shoe, pop it through those foot cradles. Coming down again, making sure I'm slightly in front of the anchor. I'm gonna grab this kettlebell once again in the racked goblet, sorry, the goblet position under my chin. Two and one, squeeze and stand. Actively pressing through the floor. Buns are tight, chest is up tall. Down and drive. Squeezing and bracing. Perfect posture. Is that front knee tracking directly above your middle toes? Really pressing the hips forward, kind of like you did those hip presses on top. Three, two, and one. All right, single leg butt kick to get out of there. We got a minute to get ready for this final prep movement before we do our full Turkish get-ups. So, so far what we've had with this Turkish get-up is we've Gone shoulder, elbow, hand, hip press, tuck the knee in, okay? Now I have this right leg in front, the bell's in my right hand. I step together, and then we reverse. So that's the part we're gonna do right now with weight. We're gonna get that kettlebell straight up overhead in your right arm, and I'm simply gonna have you step back with the left leg, brace, step together. Sound like fun? Let's do it. <laughs> We've got 15 seconds left. So get in your kettlebell in the racked position, and then straight up overhead, block it so it's pressing up toward the ceiling. All right, squeeze your core, squeeze your glutes, brace that bell straight up toward the ceiling, and you're gonna step back with the left leg, eyes stay on the bell, step right back together. Take your time, think about where your foot placement is, ensure that right knee is tracking directly over your middle toes. Eyes are staying up, actively pressing up into the handle. Tummy tight, buns tight, take your time. Lowering down like an elevator and up like an elevator. Nice job, down controlled. 30 seconds to take a breath. Whew. One of the trickiest parts is to really keep that arm steady and actively block it between the floor and the ceiling by always pressing that arm straight up. All right, we're going again in 15 seconds. Let's start getting ready. You're gonna hold the kettlebell in the left hand and we're stepping back with the right leg. So I'm gonna grab my kettlebell in the rack position, press it up, eyes on the bell, strong core. Here we go, step back, bend those knees, buns tight, step together. Take your time, keeping those eyes up, actively pressing into that kettlebell. Squeeze your buns. Is that front knee, once again, tracking directly forward? 
Is this shoulder out of your ears? Are you still holding that nice, strong, active plank? <sighs> Two and one. Good, we're gonna do that again on the other side. <laughs> Remember, this is part of your Turkish getup. That's why we're doing this. This is that final moment where you stand on top and then you'll step back and lower back down. We're going again in 15 seconds. Roll out those shoulders. Let's get ready to lunge. <laughs> Think about your foot placement. Make sure you're not coming into a balance beam position, but you do have some space between your two feet. Here we go. Drive it up in the right hand. You're stepping back with the left foot in one. Here we go. Back and step it controlled, actively pressing up. Whew. Ribs tucked in. Stick the landing on top. Now, I don't care how many you do. Notice I'm going nice and slow. I care about your form and your alignment. I'm still actively driving up into that kettlebell, trying to reach toward the ceiling. You feel how much shoulder is involved today? Five, four, three, two, and one. Gently set that down. We've got one more set on the other side, and then we're gonna put it all together with three perfect Turkish get-ups on each side. Then we'll stretch, and then we'll call it a day. All right, we're going again in 15 seconds. Shake it out, twist it out. Roll out those shoulders, 10 seconds. Let's get into that racked position. You're gonna hold it in your left hand, step back with your right foot, press it up. Eyes on the bottom of the kettlebell, step back lunges. Here we go, step that right leg back, bend the knees, and come together. Tummy tight, buns tight. Take your time with this. Again, you might notice that difference between sides. My left side is a lot less stable. And my right side, I'm working on it. That's why lunging is great for you because it really does help even out those sides. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, we've got one minute. Let's get this perfect Turkish getup set up. We're gonna do three on each side. And then we'll stretch out. So, your Turkish getup, I'm gonna demonstrate without the weight and you can try this with me during our rest break here. For the right side, my right knee's bent, my right arm is up. We're gonna start, remember that roll up we did before? Left arm is down, eyes stay in your kettlebell. Roll to my left shoulder, elbow, hand. Now remember the hip press? Hip press, tuck my knee through, half kneeling, eyes on your imaginary kettlebell. There's your lunge. Now here's your step back lunge. Hand back, hip press, lower down, shoulder, elbow, to the ground. Guys, ready? We're doing three perfect ones on each side at your pace. I'm gonna grab it in my right hand, bend the right knee, bring that kettlebell up, left hand down. You guys ready for three of them? Here we go, let's talk through it together. Rolling your left shoulder, elbow, hand. Huge hip press. Tuck the left knee through, half kneeling, tummy tight, stand up. Step it back, slowly lower down. Hand down, hip press, leg through, elbow, shoulder, down. Again, drive it up, shoulder, elbow, hand. Press, really drive through those hips. Still looking at that kettlebell, still blocking that arm straight up toward the ceiling. Reverse, hand down, try not to go too fast. Bum down, hand, elbow, shoulder. One more time, shoulder, elbow, hand. Huge hip press, bam. Bring that knee through gently. Half kneeling, still looking at the bell. Stand, return, hand down. Press through your foot to your hip, elbow, shoulder. You did it, shake it out. We'll take a short break. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so roll out those shoulders, roll out your neck. Let's bring the bell around the top of your head to the other side. Whew. All right, my left knee is bent, right arm is grounded. I'm gonna bring that kettlebell straight up above. Press the right hand down, my eyes are on the bottom. Remember, I got my Backstreet Boys picture right here. I'm gonna actively press through my shoulder, elbow, hand, a little difference on that side. Huge hip press, bam. Tuck the leg through, you can say bam too. Those sound effects sometimes help. Half kneeling, actively press, bam, standing up. Step back, lower down, controlled. Hand down, pressing through your left foot. Set the bum down, hand, elbow, shoulder, 
return. Again, drive it up. Shoulder, elbow, hand. Huge press. Slide the leg through. Half kneeling. Actively drive it up. Big press up. Reverse. Whew. Hand down. Slide it through. Elbow, shoulder. One more. Are you ready for this one? And uh, drive that up. Drive those hips up. Come on, left shoulder. Knee through. Stick it. Press it up. Bam. Step it back. Right leg. Hand down. Slide the leg through. Bum down. Elbow, shoulder. Oh my gosh, you did it. Awesome job. You now know how to do a Turkish getup. How cool is that? You can start incorporate that into your workouts. I like doing those in the beginning of my workouts at a lighter weight to kind of go through all those foundational movements and to move my body through space and to warm up my shoulders. And then I like to start to load on that weight as I go into my workout. So you've earned it. Let's do your cool down. Just a few basic stretches here. I'm gonna move into my TRX half kneeling hip flexor stretch. So I'm gonna bring a mat down just because I have to set my knee out of the ground here. My straps are at mid calf length. I'll be standing facing away just like we did for your forward lunge with Y fly in the warm up. Frankenstein position, step my right foot forward, gently lower my left knee to the ground. In this position, I'm gonna squeeze my left bum, drive the hips forward, actively press my hands up into the handles, let the shoulders fall away from my ears, relax my neck, squeezing the left bum. Now I'm gonna drop my right arm down to the side, everything relaxed, creating the distance between the two hands, and bring that back up. <sighs> and then switch feet. Left foot together, or left foot in front, squeeze your right bum, press the left hip forward. That's key is squeezing the butt cheeks on that right side that helps release the hip flexors. And drop the left arm down, release your shoulders from your ears, actively pressing those hands apart. Ah, <sighs> that feel good, I love this one. This is probably my favorite stretch, but I think I say that for all the stretches. Good, now very carefully turn around, come on up. You notice we did a lot of shoulder work today, actively holding that kettlebell overhead. Okay, so we're gonna do something called shoulder sweeps. These are fun. I'm gonna have you put your hands in the foot cradle, stand facing away, not very far in front of your hands. I'm gonna actively press downward on those foot cradles. Now we're gonna do a little wax on, wax off. Keeping tension, you're gonna bring it all the way across the front of your face. If you have to go like this, that means you're too far forward. Okay, if you don't feel anything, maybe you can scoot forward a little more. Then my left arm, wax on, wax off, but keeping that tension in the foot cradles as I go across. Okay, as you get more comfortable, you can step forward, but again, you don't wanna have to lean back to move away from the arm. Just working those different range of motions, of my ranges of motion on my shoulders. Now, let's pretend you're at a rock concert or a Backstreet Boys concert. Both hands on one side, and swing it all the way to the other side. Oh. I promise I'm not gonna sing Backstreet Boys to you. Keep tension on those foot cradles. And in fact, I don't sing Backstreet Boys in any of my workouts, so feel free to join me for some other workouts too. Side to side. Oh, and relax that. Finally, your chest and torso stretch. So similar position, but I'm gonna grab the handles, stand facing away from the anchor point in my T position. Really press those arms out, relaxing my neck. I'm gonna step forward with one foot, drive those hands apart, let my shoulders fall away from my ears. Actively drive those hands out to the side. Big inhales and exhales. Ooh, that feels good today. Now move back just a touch. I'm gonna have you drop your right arm, reach the left arm over the top. A little bit of a side bend here. And then drop the left arm, reach your right arm over the top. Again, a little bit of a side bend. Oh, it feels good. Step your feet together. Give me a forward fold. Ah, take a bow. Just let your head relax. Shake some yeses, some noes. And come on up, give yourselves a hand. Congratulations. We built a kettlebell Turkish getup with a part to whole approach. We did four sets of all of those different exercises using the suspension trainer and the kettlebells, and now you know how to do a Turkish getup. And tomorrow you're probably gonna be 
pretty sore in that shoulder area from all of that overhead kettlebell work. Um, I had so much fun with you today, guys, and I hope you join me for some of my other videos. We do lots of crazy fun things using the TRX suspension trainer and other functional tools. Have a wonderful day.